So how do we want to intro this thing? I don't know, man. I get so nervous. Why do I get nervous, dude? <laughs> I think it's because I know I don't have control over it. Like, I'm not going to be... Like, this is something that we're not going to, like, edit, really? No, this is just... Uh, yeah, we're dude. just going to talk for, like, an hour and then and then post it. Yeah, I guess this is the first official Rad podcast with... Uh, Tony Walters, and myself. And Wes Carter. Yeah. Uh, you guys know me on this channel. Uh, Wes has actually been on here before, too. Uh, but uh, he's got his own He's yeah. got his own channel. You should go subscribe over there. Don't don't go subscribe. I don't do go anything on there anymore. <laughs> I'm going to get back in the swing of it. But as for right now, it's, You'll be a, back. it's a fucking You'll ghost be back. town. <laughs> this channel's a ghost town, too. So this is the first video <laughs> I put on this channel for uh, a couple of months, I think. So, yeah yeah trying to figure out content like my the reason what i did like what i did with my channel i, I split it i i split it into three channels i did rad movies rad games and then rad entertainment uh because youtube recommends that you make channels designed around a specific like genre so right i felt like i was there was too much going on in my channel and the video game show wasn't doing that great so i thought well if i put it on its own channel maybe it'll do better and the movie reviews, people like that. Cha- that show does well. So if I start a new channel, I think that'll that'll get some steam going at least a little bit, you know, quicker. And I'll I'll build back up. Uh, and that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. My the review channel is it does okay, but it, as far as subscribers, I haven't even broke fifty yet. And uh, the video game channel is doing just as good as it was on the rad entertainment channel so and rad entertainment is suffering because (laughs) i was doing vlogs and then i quit doing vlogs and so now i don't know what i'm doing my buddy jonathan from they said we said literally just texted me and said hey how did you feel about that decision that you made to split your channel (laughs) i was like (laughs) i was like that's that's funny because i was just talking about that because i was just pondering (laughs) thinking about possible suicide yeah um no that's actually something i wanted to talk to you about because i've been noticing that becoming a thing on youtube is people splitting and it's almost like i see it as people turning youtube channels into what you see on like regular tv right like you got networks like nbc abc cbs and they've all got their own news channel they got sports they got entertainment and i right. see youtube heading in that direction you see it with people like casey and i said doing the beam thing you know right. what i mean or like philip defranco and like his new thing like it's like people are forming these uh some sirens <laughs> i live are, next to a hospital people are forming these um more or less networks on youtube because i i think people are starting to realize it's heading in that direction it's going to be the new tv if it is right well it's been it's been like that for a long time uh it's just some of the i Smaller YouTubers, I mean, not in the case of United States, a small YouTuber, but uh, mm. but some of the, the independent creators are starting to branch out. Like, But you, you've always had networks like Rooster Teeth and Machinima uh, and things like that that have, have, you know, multiple channels underneath one right. banner. And when I started Rad Entertainment, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to create a network. Uh, I had gotten together with a friend early on, and we were going to put some of his shows on my channel. Uh, to And it, everything all that stuff kind of fell through, and he went ahead with just pushing his own channel, and it's actually doing pretty good. But I, uh, but that's what I wanted when I first started. I wanted to create, have like a network of creators under one banner, uh, and then I, I was the only one doing it. So it was, right. it's hard for me to find a network, especially in the area that we live in. But I have made a lot of friends on YouTube and done a lot of uh, collaborations with a lot of people, and I really, yeah. I really enjoy the network that we're building. But it's not necessarily the network that I had dreamed up when I first started doing it. Right, and I, I'm nowhere near doing anything like that. I just, I have my vlog channel, and that's about it. I'm shooting weddings here and there i say here and there even though i've only done one and it was last week <laughs> <laughs> well but, you're, um, you're the the thing is, is you can only do youtube uh for so long before you realize that it's just not going to bring in the money that are like it's one of those things where yeah it's a hobby and it's fun and you enjoy to do it but it's like if this hobby could at least pay for itself that'd be cool that and if it could be... start paying for other things that'd be even better yeah i mean of course w- we say that it's not it's not for the money, which it's not. But it would also. But you see all these millions of people doing it, right? And you're like, man, I can totally do that if I just had the time to do it. If I was able to do it and support myself doing it, then that's what I'd be doing. But instead, I have to work in a factory because 
I, it's, I mean, it's a catch got, 22 right. man it's a catch 22 yeah, you, you have to the... work to survive but because you're working you don't have the time to put it into the creative aspect that you really want All right uh and that's uh that's every but that's every youtuber every every channel started that way i mean uh you know it's just content and trying to bring people to your channel uh i mean i think that your channel has like i mean i think that you're you've you've come a long way from your phone videos right. to, to what you're doing now. And I think that there's definite talent there and definite, like it's your, your vlogs are entertaining. It's just trying to bring the audience to it is the, the struggle. Right. And I think I just need to go back to doing it because it's <clears throat> something I love to do. That's what I, the first video I ever made, I filmed a video of my daughter playing around and edited it on some shitty, <clears throat> um, editing software some app on windows phone it right was, but i love the process of it man i love putting it together and i've always had <clears throat> this sort of like underlying passion for it i've just never um i've never tapped into it before because i was doing drugs <laughs> doing yeah. drugs and other shit right i yeah i mean <clears throat> i i did stuff in high school all the time we always had a camera out and you know we we were like very much in like the jackass community at the time so it was mostly just like us doing stupid stuff or pranking each other Dude, jackass or was like i think jackass paved the way for everything when it comes to stuff like that i mean Right, I mean, when that's YouTube, our generation, dude, our generation that just it influenced so many people. That's the first thing I ever did. The first camera I ever got, I was like, I don't know, like twelve or thirteen years old. I got it for my birthday. My mom got it from like Rena Center, some place where you fucking you, right. You rent, you rent to own. Yeah. So I had it for maybe like three weeks, and it was just me and my buddy. And I only had like one tape. It was the one with the little ass tapes that go in. Right. I had one tape. And so we would film stupid shit, like jumping off church steps into a bush. I like still have the scar on my back from that. <laughs> um, and we would put it in, we'd pop it in the big tape and pop it in the VCR and watch it. And then we'd just film over it. <laughs> That's all we did because I only had one tape and it right. was all inspired from Jackass. Well, then like three weeks later, my broke ass mom couldn't couldn't afford to keep it so it went back to uh um, right went I, back to old rena center yeah we we used to do that stuff all the time <clears throat> but even youtube at the time when youtube like you know first started i just all i used it for was to, like look up people hurting themselves you know like skateboard fails and things like that right like i didn't take it as a serious medium and i wish that i would have early on yeah uh just because we were already doing that stuff but we we had the tapes and it was like we didn't have the equipment to go from from these little VHS tapes to digital yeah. uh, to even get it on there. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even care. We would like make little movies and then go to like our friends parties and play them on the TV for like all of our friends to watch. Like, yeah. that's, that's all we used them for was just for, for that. We didn't think bigger. And I wish that I would have. Right. Too bad the internet wasn't around back then. Huh? Right. I mean, yeah. it, it was there. It was just like MySpace and yeah, you know, and I mean, we were, I was also into the music scene. I thought I was going to end up being a rock star. And, you know, so we had like, we had, you know, I was recording music and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, but it wasn't really right. I, it, it, it took me in a different direction, and I wish I would have like just been more passionate about the video side of stuff. Yeah, because I'm gonna be 30 this year, and I've just now found my passion in life. Hey man, it's never too late, right? I mean, I'm 27. I don't know. It's it's not it's not too late, but it definitely becomes harder. Like now, I have two kids and another one on the way. And I'm working a full time job, and I'm coming off of like ten years of horrible debt and just a horrible time, and uh, and I'm just trying to I don't know, dude. I feel like I'm <clears throat> five years old, experiencing the world from like a totally new perspective. And uh, yeah, I mean, for you, uh, uh, yeah, for you know everything that you've been through, this is definitely a big life change. For sure, I, I love every second, of, dude. This is like it's become my new addiction, and it. And that's why I'm so, I don't know, man. It's, I I have like highs and lows, dude. Like I, I get super motivated. I get pumped up and I just want to start making stuff. And then, and then it's like life will kick me in the ass. I'll have to work like three weeks in a row of 12 hour days every day. And it just ruins all my motivation, all my momentum that I had going. And it's like that with not just my job, but with everything. Like I had this idea. I had this idea to quit my job in six months and really focus on my filmmaking career, YouTube career, whatever you want to call it. And then bam, I'm having another kid. So, so yeah, that puts a, it, I'm not going to lie. Like I it kinda, puts a hurdle there. It, it put me in a <laughs> funk, man. It put me down for the count for a little bit. I was just like, shit, but now I'm, I'm back to like a, a plateaued 
right. kind of state. And I, I, I'm recognizing the situation and I know I just got to reevaluate and, uh, yeah, and figure I mean, out a different plan. I, in my mind, <laughs> I think that, I mean, I know you make, you make good money where you're at and everything, but, uh, have you tried like moving to first shift or something like that? Like something that would allow you more time to be creative. I mean, I, I know you make more money <clears throat> on thirds probably. This probably yeah, because I'm going to, the only reason I went to thirds from days was because I got offered a higher position with, um, with a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty higher pay scale. Uh huh. And that's the only reason I did it. But night shift sucks. I mean, I would be honestly, if I, if I could make the same amount of money going to days, I would go to days. Right. And I've even thought about maybe if I, maybe if I just went back to being a loader, you know, and, uh, and made that amount of money again, I'd probably like it just for the fact that I would be on days because night shift in itself, I don't think people, a lot of people don't know what that does to you, but it really fucks uh, you up, man. My, it, it really does. Yeah. My it, really good friend, uh, <clears throat> Daniel Sparks, who's also been on the show, he worked third shift for eight years. He just moved to first shift in eight years. And he said that it was like, uh, like he joined the living again. Like he's just Dude, been- <laughs> yesterday. I worked, um, 16 hours. I worked, from 11 till 11 at night until three o'clock in the afternoon the next day. And yesterday it was the first time I had been at my job during the day in so long. And I was telling everyone how crazy it felt, dude. I, there was actually people that I yeah, could talk to. Yeah, cause there's like to. nobody there. There was shift, sunshine. Right? I could go out and get sun on my face and it's just, it's not natural, man. We're not supposed to, we're just, we're not nocturnal. Dude. <laughs> right. We're not, we're not made yeah to do that we're we're supposed to sleep at night and be we're supposed to rise and fall with the sun dude and that's uh yeah yeah i don't know it's crazy 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 yeah so uh outside of youtube anything else you've been up to lately i mean since you haven't been doing videos <clears throat> no going to work I've coming been, home yeah dude working and sleeping and being depressed that i'm not putting out content yeah because i have people Almost every day, someone will message me, dude. Where's where's your vlogs? This yeah. where's that? You've built a pretty good little fan base. This, I mean, it's not. You it's know, pretty much local. It's local, but people really enjoy it. And uh, but I don't know. You question those things like like do they enjoy it because they know you, or do they enjoy it because right? It's good and content? that's see, that's I don't have much of a an unbiased opinion on that. You know what I mean? I, I recently showed my vlogs to um, kind of an older guy. Uh, like he's, I don't know, probably in his 60s. And he's an old uh, like uh, camera. Like he did, he did a lot of photography. And he did right. photography for a living for a long time until it went digital. And then he uh, he stopped doing it. But uh, I showed, him, showed it to him. It's a guy that I met through work. And he was like, his 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 input was his constructive criticism. He was like, "Do you want my honest opinion?" I was like, "Yeah, dude, give it to me." And he says, uh, "You you know, it's put together really well. It's shot great. Like, I mean, you clearly have a skill set. But who the fuck gives a shit about your life?" <laughs> and that's when I stopped vlogging because I thought about it and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I was like, who does give a shit? Like, nobody gives a Wait shit a about minute. my life. Who the fuck am I? <laughs> right. Who am I to think I, anyone gives a shit about me?" Yeah, uh, dude, I went through the same thing. But then again, at the end of the day, I'm doing it because for one, for practice is number one. Right. For practice to, that's why I make my vlog so extra so much like like cinematic. a movie yeah, yeah cinematic and uh because it's just practice for me dude and i've i've learned so much from doing it even though right i vlogging taught me a lot too <laughs> in editing like and it, it became something that was fresh and and fun to edit because i'd done the video game show for like a year and the movie review show and yeah. that's just you know jump cuts like the whole time like it's not yeah. it's not difficult to edit by any means yeah i got over that part of it pretty quick because uh, i noticed that right from the get like i was like shit who cares like why am i but then i'm like you know what i'm doing this because i like to fucking do right. it you but know? It, it got me thinking of like trying to come up with like more original content like everybody and their mother's got a vlog and that's true dude. so it's like it's all personality and it's like if people really like your personality then you know uh, than the watch but at the same time it's it's trying to find something that's unique and different and uh not just a like casey neistat ripoff which is what i felt like mine wasn't even that my vlog was becoming more like just like a music montage of my day mm -hmm. with no real content at least with your content you have like 
You you went through spurts where it kind of became that. I had when but I was you, with when I was living with Sean. I felt like shit was good. There was a couple episodes. I like specifically episode ten when we were actually doing the episodes and before I started calling them vlogs. Uh huh. Like th- if you go back and watch that, that is like how I wanted every single one of them to be. It was just there was so much going on and it. Like I tried to later on, like I tried to put everything in, like almost follow that same format because mm-hmm. I loved it. Just. There was no slow time. Dude. I miss the beginning of your episodes when you used to have some random person hold up a sign or like. <clears throat> I throw missed something that too. I thought that was it. such a good it's fucking a great, idea, man. Yeah, it's a great idea. I love that. And uh, I don't know, dude. I just I, I I go through. I care too much about what other people think, dude. <laughs> that's my big. I, it's a, I, it's a downfall. I, I've for... said that before, dude. That like that is the number one thing that'll hold anyone back is if you if you like. Some dude told you, hey, like, who gives a shit? And you stopped fucking vlogging. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, you know that. You just got to keep fucking going, knowing, like, deep down that you're doing something because you want to fucking do it at the end of the I day. I can't remember know? the guy's name, uh, but he put he did that little documentary of, like, do you have to be an asshole to succeed? And Max Joseph. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was such a great documentary. And that's and it, it, it really makes you think. uh and it, it comes back to like, you know, you care too much what people think, but it, you really need to not. You need to just like say, fuck it. And I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. And if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. Like the more the more you you are on camera, the more people will respond to it. Dude, that's but so that's true. the hardest thing for me, too, is like uh, I there's certain things that I don't put in my in my vlogs. Like I'm a smoker and I don't ever. That's the first time. This is the first time that I've ever. You're a like, smoker, right. Tony. <laughs> and uh, like I don't put that in the vlog uh, because. But maybe I should. Maybe I should start being more of myself. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm trying to. I like it's like I'm trying to quit smoking. Like I smoke like a pack in a week. Like like I've I've cut back pretty good. Uh, but at the same time, uh, my life's been a little bit more hectic and stressful. So I have been smoking more often lately than I was just a couple months ago. But, uh, but that's one of the things where it's like, I do edit my life to present myself more as a character of myself than actually myself. And maybe I that's a good interpretation, a character of yourself rather than yourself. And I think I kind of fall into that category too. I try not to, but I think everybody is. I think um, with my history of uh, drugs and shit and being so open about it, that is, um, I've seen the benefit of being open about it because I've had people, people can relate to it and people will watch my shit just for that specific reason because maybe they're dealing with some shit or they know someone and they're trying to get some information. Right. On, so <clears throat> I think it's, I think it's great to be as genuine as fucking humanly possible because, because you're th- you're you don't have to try as hard to to keep up this fucking thing you know what i mean right if if you don't have to try to to be somebody be, else i don't even i'm fucking mumbling my words no i, but I, I get, you what, get what i'm trying to say i get what you're saying but at the <clears> same <throat> time like i know that you've said it a thousand times where you like those episodes are the episodes that actually do really well on your show when you're talking about you know like like your addiction and stuff that you went yeah through. but you at the same time you didn't want to become the recovering addict like youtuber like that's not right. what you wanted to be you know known and, but, for but i mean and i've also thought like early on before i even started a youtube channel i thought about that because i didn't you don't i don't really know anyone who who has done that you know because they've probably maybe tried it and then fucking relapsed or something like, who knows but and i was like i knew it like i knew deep down like i was in this one for the long run like i was gonna stay clean and i still feel that way 100 percent today so I don't know, I thought about, like, having that niche, you know, and, uh, but then again, like, I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to <clears throat> stay rooted in that, but also be as far away from it as right. possible. You, you're, you want to move forward, but not forget where you came from. Exactly. And, and I think that's a great, I think that's a great place to start, especially. Tony's not nervous, everybody, but I'm totally fucking nervous. <laughs> I, if you can't dude, tell this, by the way, I'm just I excited can't that talk. this isn't live. Like every Monday <clears throat> we do our Game of Thrones recap show and we do it live. I and... would fucking <laughs> shit my pants, dude. There's so this no, is, this is comfortable for me. There's this is good. no way I could do this. I could not do it, like, but maybe I should in order to get over that. Right. Yeah. Dude, if, if anyone's seen my behind the scenes. You should do a blooper they reel would, sometime. No, it would be so <laughs> embarrassing. People would be like, this dude's so fucking fake, man. Because I, I'll say something 20 different times and then watch it just in order for... Like, it's so bad, dude. I need to just... I need to break that mold, I do, I do the same stuff. And I think, I think most people do. I mean... 
uh, especially with the review side of stuff, it's uh, you should watch. I mean, I should put a blooper <clears throat> thing together for that because it's just like. You want to know how many times I say, hey, Rad World, welcome to this thing, before I'm like, oh, that felt good. Dude. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, what's up, guys? I'm fucking going to work. That's every fucking I'm in my car I've again. <laughs> Dude, I, my vlog is in my car. That's all it is. I live in my car. I, I thought of this quote a long time ago, um, like a self-quote. Yeah. Be who you are when you're alone in your car. <laughs> dude because when i'm alone in my car i am the most true version of myself that i will ever be right for sure unless i have a camera in my face <laughs> but dude like i fucking rock out and i don't give a fuck i'm just be who you are when you're in your car at all times you right you know what i mean but I like words, words I like of that. wisdom by yeah. west carter <laughs> that's good it's good i uh, yeah i I feel like that uh, that applies to me less these days, just because I like hardly ever drive my car. <laughs> yeah. But like back in the day, that was where I expressed myself. I guess I don't know, just like crank the music and yeah, just, like, dude, for sure. You know, just sing at the top of your lungs. And it's been a long time since I've done that. I'm just either always going to work or coming home from. Work. Yeah, you got to commute all, all the fucking time. My commute's like a mile. Like I mean, I don't even have time to finish a song before I get there. Yeah, yeah. dude. I don't know, man. But I really want to jump back into, I really want to jump back into the whole YouTube. I, I want to go hard again, but I don't know. I want to change it up, dude. That's my, that's a big problem with me too, is I get bored really quickly. That's my problem too, as I get bored really quickly. I, I <clears throat> that's why. I, I, honestly, actually, I should say I get inspired too much. I get inspired by something else and I'm like, I want to do that. I want to fucking do what he's doing. I I, I get know, I get that to a point, but I mine is like I my I've done nine vlog episodes, and when I watch through them, it's the same shit over and over and over. There's I'm not I don't feel like I'm I I mean I there there are definitely like if you watch the first vlog to the latest vlog, there's definitely growth in like editing style and the way it's shot and stuff. Yeah. But but as far as the content, the content actually lacked the further it went on. The earlier episodes, I talked to the camera more and explained what I was doing. And then it became <clears> like, I started doing more public stuff. And I, I was, I'm not over the fear of just whipping my camera out and talking in public to my camera when there's people around me and stuff right. like that. And I need to get over that. Uh, so it ended up just being like, just like all these shots of like crowds and people and just like low shots because I don't want to like just put a camera in everybody's face. And yeah. like all this stuff just edited together in like a music montage of my day. And then like, maybe a little bit of me explaining what I did, but some of the times I didn't even explain what I did. I just like threw together a music montage and put it up there and I was just getting sick of it. And I came to episode 10 and I was like, episode 10 has got to be something good because <laughs> it's 10. Yeah. And it's like, a, it's like, you know, um, it's like a step and that needs to be, you know, hit. And, uh, I wonder why, that is. why do we do that as a society? Mm -hmm. Why it, it increments of 10 is always, yeah, I had this theory, dude, that like, that's why most people die around a hundred because, Everyone th is it's just in our heads since like, we're oh, kids it. that 100 is like, if you make it past 100, you're fucking doing good. But like, <laughs> that's like the universal age that's in everyone's mind is like, you make it to 100 and you die. When I was in high school, I was like, eh, if I, if I, you know, live to 30, I'll be happy. Like, that's literally <laughs> but how I used that's to think. so weird though to me. I don't know. I feel like maybe this probably sounds like fucking stoner talk or whatever, but what, what if we had like 200 in our head as a child that that's the number that we all live to? Like, would we like live to 200 like easily just like we do? Just because it's like mind over matter kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, for sure. Maybe. I don't know, man. It's crazy. Mind's a powerful thing? It sure is. Yeah, definitely stoner talk though. Dude, I've been listening to the fucking Joe Rogan podcast way <laughs> Joe too Rogan much. Joe Rogan will do that to you. <laughs> way too much lately. I, I yeah. find it so fascinating. I only no, actually watch Joe Rogan when you post something from Joe Rogan, and then I like watch it. But I like Joe Rogan a lot. I just, uh, I, I haven't really gotten hooked onto his his podcast. I, I, I don't know really know why. Maybe it's just it's not haven't looked it up. Like I just, <laughs> I dude, like, I go on it. binges. I go on information binges. Like I'll hear something. I think what it is is like he's a super down to earth dude that I feel like I can relate to on like a lot of levels as like personality wise and shit and just like beliefs and whatnot. And when I hear someone like that talk about really interesting stuff, it makes me want to learn it rather than some fucking shitty teacher who's just yelling at me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And dude, I just love to learn whenever it's coming from someone that I can relate to. And uh, yeah, the best teachers you ever had in school were <clears throat> only the ones that you felt like you could relate to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever seen that? Sorry to cut you off. No, you're totally fine. 
have you ever seen that it was a, maybe it was a meme or it was, it's from some artists it was you know like political cartoon artists and shit yeah it was something along the lines of that it was it's a basically it's a wall with like beautiful scenery on it and behind the wall is like this city burning and like buildings are falling down there's like smoke and shit and it's dark and um this little girl is standing on a stack of books and she's like looking over the wall and there's another little girl standing next to her same height but she doesn't have anything to stand on so all she can see is this beautiful wall Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so basically it's saying like the more you fucking know the more you see the more you realize how fucked up everything is and that's why i like to learn and i think that it, it it goes back to like i think the first the first um, experience I had with that was like the whole 9-11 conspiracies and shit like that. Like yeah. <clears throat> I started watching that and I was like, fuck, it, it, it like blew my mind. It was and it made a lot of sense to me. And, and I just started going on this. I went down this rabbit hole, dude, of just wanting to learn as much as I could so I could know as much right. as I could know. Yeah, the the problem, the problem with that rabbit hole. And <clears throat> I think that I think a lot of people in this. Well, maybe not a lot of people in this area. You have to but... know when to quit. Yeah, I mean, you, the, the, the problem is you, you get really far into the rabbit hole. Like, I've gotten really deep into that rabbit hole to a point of, I finally reach, I reached a, a level of, like, like what is misinformation? Like, what's... Because, mani- like, like, yes, the media is manipulating, uh, you know, for you to think one way. But there's also, uh, you know, where you, you think you're finding the truth is also manipulating you to think another way. It's just too many biases. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's my so problem. So I, I, I take everything with a grain of salt these days. And, um, I, I, I just know that I'm too small to change any of the real big shit, like the real big shit. Yeah. So I, uh, I just try to just try to live a happy life and And not not dwell on things that could or could not be a, uh, you know. Right, dude. And that's like, that's like something I learned in rehab. One of the many times I've been to rehab, they, um, it's there's a certain step when you get to rehab the 12 steps you know, i'm sure you know about the 12 right. steps everyone that's like universally known but <laughs> um not that er- not everyone knows what the 12 steps are though but there's a certain step where you have to like make amends and shit and there's a step where it's called like it, like basically you've worn out your like you've worn out your words you've worn out your sorry saying sorry right too many times like no one gives a shit you know but so you got to make what's called a living amends where basically you just do you just live your life and and do good and and do whatever you're going to do. And, and that's because genuinely for the most part, I don't know why I said genuinely, but for the most part, people just, all they want to see is you do good. And once you do that, like you've made for most people that you've hurt and whatever. Right. Once you, in that sense, it's more, it's like an action speak louder than words thing. You can say, sorry, pretty a million times. Pretty much. When people see that you've actually cleaned up, you've held a job, you've done all these things. They're like, Hey, I wonder how he's doing. Like, <laughs> so makes- yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. Actions speak louder than words. But um, if you, but you can put that to like what you were talking about. Like, you just do your own thing and do good, and then that's just ultimately gonna rub off. Right. I, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of karma, and I feel like as long as I put good in the world, uh, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll get some of that back in return. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because I dwelled. I went through. I mean, I went through you know, that rabbit hole and dwelled on life and, and all these bad things that could or could not be happening in the world. And, uh, I, uh, I went through not, not, not like a heavy depression, but like a really kind of more scared than anything, yeah, not like depressed, dude. but scared. <laughs> yeah. And I it was, relate. a it was like a rough time in my life, but I'm glad I went through it because I came out really positive on the other end. Like when I, when yeah, I went through it. same here, man. I was like, I was one of the dudes who like, if I had, like, for instance, if I had this whole, like, flat earth thing that's, like, going on now, if yeah. that was the thing, which I'm sure it was, it just wasn't as big as it is now, if that was going on by the time I was, like, going down this rabbit hole, I probably would have believed it. Just, I would just have at because... least read into it more, because right now I'm just, like, I've read into it a little bit, because it just, like, yeah. blew my mind. I was just like, come on now. Like, I went down that rabbit hole, and, yeah, yeah flat earth, I just... <clears throat> I just can't buy it. I Dude, can't. at the time though, when I was going down that rabbit hole, I was fucking super gullible. I was I was convinced the world was gonna end in 2012. And so shit. was I, man. I was <laughs> like, I was I mean, I wasn't going as far as like uh building a fucking bomb shelter or anything. But no, there I I I found one in Winnemac and knew the guy that 
maintained it and was like, well, if things hit the fan, maybe I'll give yeah. him a call. But <laughs> <laughs> call him on December 20th. Hey, like, man. Well, what's going on? Party? <laughs> <Wanna hang out? laughs> It's part of that that bunker, right? It's got a lot of space. Yeah. Let's just go down there for a party, <laughs> just just in case. <laughs> Man. Yeah, that's that's fucking crazy shit. And once it right after it didn't happen, like I <clears throat> soon after, I was like, it's all just. Well, they say it did happen. It's fear porn, dude. They did. It's they say fear it, porn. They say it did <clears throat> happen. It was just a. It was just a, a like an interdimensional uh, happening okay. that uh, uh, we just didn't experience it, but it happened. Nice. <laughs> yes. so we're all it's just like lost right now we're just fucking exactly. living in a different reality yeah. you uh i don't know if we're getting we're not really getting off topic <laughs> what, i don't even we were we really, really topic. on topic uh, what, what was the topic but uh have you heard of the mandela effect no i don't think so okay this is a good one this here we is a good go one. <laughs> uh it's a good one that like makes you real like it blows my mind too too much but um uh basically i think what it revolves around is i forget where it's located but like the particle accelerator uh, I forget where it's located in the world, but in that area, like it's like Sweden, maybe um, in that area, a lot of the people uh, believe that uh, Nelson Mandela died in prison. OK, but he, he didn't, you know, but uh, they believe that he died in prison. They remember that he died in prison, even though he did not. And it's supposed to be like there's this rip in the space time continuum because the particle particle accelerator and like the dimensions are bleeding over. Uh, like, there, but there's a like couple stranger things but there's some things <laughs> do you remember a movie with Sinbad in it like the comedian Sinbad as a genie yeah never happened what never happened it, was, Shaqu- it, was, of... it was Shaquille O'Neal Kazam yeah yeah but it wasn't Sinbad it was Shaquille O'Neal right uh, <laughs> uh, do you remember the uh, Bernstein <clears throat> Bears yeah it's not they're not called the Bernstein Bears they're called the Bernstein Bears Oh, wait, so what does that even mean, though? It means that the dimensions are bleeding over. We're remembering a a, 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 a a dimension that we used to be in, and now we've bled over into a different, an alternate universe, like an alternate reality. Uh, the line from Star Wars, uh, <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Yeah. He doesn't say that. Oh, he says... Yeah. He says, no, I am your father. He says, no, I am your father. He does not say Luke, okay, I am your father. Okay, but couldn't that have been like some some the famous person quoted it and then some everyone just right it's 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 what it is it's like a global miscommun or uh like miss uh interpretation yeah mi- like misremembering basically okay uh but but it, it's like it revolves a lot around a lot of pop culture things but um uh at least for the like those examples are a lot of pop culture you know what things. it is it's now we have fucking social media dude like ever we're sharing so much information at such a high rate of speed dude that's like all this shit's like coming up, right out from but under wraps. I, I found out i just like somebody told me about that a few weeks ago <laughs> or like last month sometime and then i uh they just mentioned the bernstein bears thing and i was like oh that's weird you know and the sinbad thing and then i started like looking stuff up online the so star wars thing got me because i'm a huge star wars fan so and i was like fucking... i had to watch the movie to find out and if you there's an interview with uh um uh the the dude that was the voice of darth vader um What's his I name? have no idea. James Earl Jones. So many uh, people who watch this are gonna hate me right now, but I've <laughs> never seen Star Wars. Oh man! But never. James Earl Jones. I'm fa- <laughs> as a fan of a movie, as, as such a fan of movies as I am, and I've you never really seen Star Wars. I know, dude. Just the, just watch the original trilogy. That's what I want. I just want to watch, watch that. the good ones. That's good. But uh, everyone's like, they're all fucking good ones. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, oh, great. No, I mean the the other one. The, the prequels have. The stories from the prequels are good. They're just executed really poorly. But okay. uh, but yeah, that's, aren't they uh, like aren't they like sold to? Uh, sorry for getting off topic. No, aren't no, they there's, like, no there's no topic. It's like topic. sold to Disney now, right? Yeah. So they're just gonna pump out one every fucking year now, and it's gonna. Uh, ruin yeah, it's it. one one a year. Um, and I I foresee <clears throat> them eventually going to two a year. Jeez, uh, just come like on, they do with the Marvel man. movies. And this this year the Marvel movies got three. Why? Uh, Lucasfilm owned it, right? Like Lucasfilm before. still owns it, but now Disney owns Lucasfilm. Disney owns every fucking one, dude. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not very happy with the direction of the new movies. I like The Force Awakens a lot, actually. I do like that, like Episode Seven. But uh, Rogue One, I didn't really care for too much. And all the stuff that's coming out for the Han Solo movie, I'm just like, this movie's going to suck. Like, yeah. Because the directors just quit. i seen that. i like, seen you shared that. And I I, um, I read it because it was just interesting. Like, they fired a bunch of people and they brought in um, 
Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Um, fucking happy days. Uh, Ron, Ron Howard, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, they brought in Ron Howard. That's awesome. Yeah. I love his films. I love Ron Howard, but uh, Ron Howard's just gonna be. He's gonna be a studio guy. Like they're bringing in Ron Howard. He's gonna do just what they want to do. He's gonna. He's gonna do it well, but he's gonna do just what they want to do. He's not gonna. It's not gonna be like super creative. And the movie's like eighty percent shot. Like, what are they gonna really do? That's the thing, though, man. With big fucking with big movies like that, when other people got their hands in it, you just can't do what you want to do. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, I mean. I read this or, or watch. I watched this interview a long time ago with Billy Bob Thornton, and he was talking about when he made Sling Blade. I don't know if you knew that, but he he wrote and directed Sling Blade and was also fucking Sling Blade. Right. Um, was his name Carl? <clears throat> um, I'm not gonna. It's do been a, I'm not gonna time. do a Sling Blade impression. It's I was, been I was, a very I long time. And I was like, fuck that. I can't do a good one. Yeah. Um, but it, I've actually I don't know that I've ever seen Sling Blade all the way oh, through. Oh, dude, it's so I, good. I've I it's. I've seen parts of it, like I, I I I remember the movie, but I must have been I've seen it like a too yeah. young of an age to like. If really I know remember it. correctly from the interview, he I think he said it was <clears throat> maybe Martin Scorsese that he he showed the film to first, and he um he wrote back to him and was like, uh, enjoy this, enjoy everything about it because this is gonna be." He's like, "You're gonna win an Oscar for this," which he did. He's like, you're going to win, or maybe maybe he didn't win an Oscar here, I know he won a bunch of awards for it. Um, he's like, enjoy it while it lasts, because this is going to be the only movie that you truly were able to make completely, like, with everything you wanted to do. Right, right, because, yeah, a good director, like, good director, <clears throat> small director does something big, and then every studio wants them. Yep. Uh, that's happening right now with Jordan Peele, and even Jordan, you know, and, like, when he did Get Out, yeah. and, which was amazing. Dude, so good. Yeah, and uh, now they're, like, every franchise wants him. Like, they wanted him for, like, a DC movie, and he turned it down, and I think they even, like, questioned him on a Marvel movie, and they turned him down, or he turned them down. Good. And, uh, yeah, he's that. he just wants to keep doing these small movies, and I love it. I Dude, want, I, I love I, that, I want too. creative, I want creative original films. I don't I'm care. I'm so sick of superhero <laughs> movies. I love, I love the superhero movies, but I think that there's still... There's still plenty of other but space it's like, out there for, it's, for small movies to come out because I watch tons of small movies throughout the year too. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Netflix is a big dude. They're getting in the game now, man. They're oh, yeah. fucking Definitely. huge. Have you seen uh, Ozark, the new series? No. Jason Bateman. It's, uh, no. Written and written directed by Jason Bateman. No. Any stars in it? Pretty good. I'll have to check it out. Pretty good. I I just finished it. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm actually gonna do a review for it hopefully sometime this weekend. Uh, I was gonna do a review for that and a review for the Castlevania series. Dude, did you see the new Stranger Things the trailer? trailer? Yeah. Oh dude. my god, the trailer is so it's fucking really good. good. I get the Michael Jackson song playing. It just oh, it's so fucking good. It's great. Did you see the trailer for it? Yes, the new one. Oh my god, that looks so good. It so many really people, good. dude, in the comment section on like Facebook, they're like. This fucking looks terrible. I didn't even finish the over. It looks so good. Dude. It looks great. It, it looks, looks great. cinematic as fuck. It yeah. just looks like whoever who it, directed it. I'm not sure. I don't know either, but it looks like they fucking knew what they were. Just I feel like you can you can always most for the most part you can tell from the trailer if it's gonna be good or I, if it's gonna be shit. It depends on the marketing campaign, but <clears> this one so far really good because like there's there are movies that like um. I don't know why this one pops in my mind, but that Adam Sandler movie called uh, Funny People, it came out like years and years ago. Uh, it was marketed as a comedy and it was not Dude, a comedy. Dude, that movie sucked. It really <laughs> it's did. Because it marked, like, I, I think it's a good movie. It's just like... I there was like, something about it, dude. It lost. It was slow. It, it was, was very super slow, slow I, man. I, like, I watched... When, when I watched it, I walked away thinking, I'm probably not going to watch that again. I'm glad I watched it. Like, I felt like it was... I didn't lose like, like two hours of my life or anything right. like that. But I also just thought it was just bad marketing. It was just, it was a movie that was completely marketed as a comedy and it was not a comedy. If they would have marketed it for what it was, it maybe it would have been, you would have at least watched it with a different lens when you went to watch it. You yeah. Know what I mean? I'm as, uh, Adam Sandler, dude, I'm one of the biggest, I mean, I'm as big as a fan as anyone else. Like Billy Madison is my shit. I can, I can quote that yeah, movie. Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. From beginning. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Deeds, like yeah. all the good ones, dude. Big Daddy. Right. Um, but, but uh, uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everything but, after that pretty much <laughs> yeah i don't know man he he's still i wonder he's a working actor this is this what i think life. dude i wonder if i was young and i watch his movies now if i would like them you know what i mean because like it like seems like movies? they're really tailored towards kids Kinda. Have you have you watched any of his serious movies they're actually yeah what I mean, was the one about uh, 9-11 did you ever watch that he plays like this dude his wife and kids were killed um, in 9-11, they were in a plane or something. 
in one of the planes and uh, he plays this like fucked up dude and uh, I think um, who's the that black actor um, Morgan f- Freeman <laughs> <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> no, um, he's in a bunch of sh- Don Cheadle, uh, right? I'm pretty sure it's Don Cheadle. Yeah. I could be wrong. I can't remember. I think it's him. He plays like um, a dentist or something, but he was his buddy. They were like roommates in college. Yeah. And so he knows what happens and he sees them all the time on the streets. All fucking, he did. He he went crazy from what happened. It's a good movie. You should check it out. I don't want to sit here and go through the whole fucking <laughs> plot of the movie, but it's really good. You should check it out. Yeah. But well, I liked, uh, <clears throat> what was it, uh, the Punch Drunk Love? Yeah, right, that's a good one. I haven't seen it in a long time, but that's uh, a good one. Like, I, but he's he's just become a working actor at this point. Like he and, and he's got like a huge Netflix deal. He's got like a six movie Netflix deal. I mean, dude's dude's making money. He's not hurting. Dude, uh, sure. I'm not necessarily into his content, but, but that's what I don't but, like. Like, at the end of the day, how much fucking money do you need to make? Like, how how much how passionate are you still about what you're doing? Or I don't think that he is. To... I think he's just a working actor. But I mean. There are plenty of there are plenty of working actors that I mean they just treat it as a job. It's not like an artistic thing. Like uh, like Danny Trejo is a working actor and he's one of the nicest guys ever. Yeah. And he's uh he's Buddy just a mine's actually actor. going to see him at Comic Con huh? in Chicago soon. Who is? He's supposed to be uh, at Comic Con in Chicago. <sighs> I really want to go. I want to meet him really bad. He's I love the Machete movies. I <laughs> yeah. it's like I really do. I love those movies. But uh but he's like a working actor. Seth Green or not Seth Green uh um. Uh, God, uh, Jason Lee, Jason Lee, working actor, doing those okay. Chipmunks movies and yeah. all that stuff. Like, but he's a great actor, but he's just a working actor. I mean, he, right. and he he's come out in tons of interviews that just said that you know, hey, I've got kids and a family to support. Like, so yeah. I, I, he's like, he's like, I don't really have the option to pick and choose what I want to do. He's like, I'd rather just do these movies just to get them done and make you know make a paycheck. Like, he's just a working. Yeah. He just treats it like a day to day job, and right. that's. And that's totally fine if that's what you want to do, but I that's not going to be the kinds of movies that I enjoy or watch. Yeah. You know, I'm more into, like, artistic uh, visions. Me and... too. So what do you think about Tarantino, the whole um, the, the Charles Manson murders? I, I mean, I think that's great. I, like, I think that's a... I it's going to be his first movie ever, like, done on a factual... Thing. Well, well, I mean, you got Inglorious Bastards, but he put say, his own twist on it. I think that's probably what he'll do with this movie, too. You I th- think so? I don't think it's going to be a man. factual... I don't know, man. That's a fucking... That's a touchy thing. Well, I guess... So is Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that... That's I think pretty that touchy, it's gonna too. Be a, don't, I, mean, you know, I think it's different, though. I still it's gonna think that's a different movie, thing. It's going to be a Tarantino movie, though. It's, it's not going to... You know, it's still going to be a Tarantino movie. It's just surrounded about... Around, a, you know, an actual event. But yeah. who knows what the, what the perspective of it's going to be? Like, is it going to be from the perspective of Charles Manson? Is it going to be the perspective of a next-door neighbor? neighbor like he could really throw his own spin on the whole thing if you from the perspective of like you know like a random cousin that just stopped by once you know what i mean like, yeah. like he could really do whatever he wants it doesn't it doesn't have to i don't know i'm i'm interested in it because i love pretty much almost every tarantino movie except for death proof and uh yeah i didn't watch um i watched like half of death proof and i think i, I watched cool. it you've half, seen the half if you've seen half of it you've seen the whole thing i watched, he just does it twice <clears throat> yeah <laughs> i watched after work one day and i like fell asleep watching it and uh yeah. which shame on me because i'm like huge tarantino fan and i should it's it's not but then yeah i hear cool shit stuff like in that it, but it's from, not that like, great. people like you all the time they're like it fucking sucks so it just turns me off like i don't really like death proof and i'm not a huge <clears throat> fan of jackie brown but i enjoy like jackie brown's a good movie it's just not it's it's, it's on the bottom of my list as far yeah. as tarantino goes what about have you ever seen uh four rooms it's on netflix and i've been meaning to watch it I watched, he just directs like one skit in it. Run one part, and I don't even know if I watched the part that he directed because whatever I watched of it, which wasn't a lot, I, I think it's, he fucking I'm did not like. Pretty it at sure all. he directs the, the whatever sketch with uh, Tim Roth in it, but I don't know if Tim Roth's like a through character through the whole. He thing also that. wrote uh, True Romance. Have you ever seen True? Romance? I did not like that movie either. Yeah, not 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 a big. And fan you know of what that. it is about that movie? It of, of all things, it was the soundtrack, dude. It was the score. Yeah, something of. It's got it's got a score that does not and it, the music is a soul of a movie. Like I don't care who you are, the right. music is a fucking that's why, huge I mean, that's part of a movie. That's why Tarantino is so good. Is yeah, he's, and he edit or he writes to the music. Like he's got the music picked out before they even start yeah. shooting the movie. And um, except for Hateful Eight, that was the first movie he actually did it his uh, an original score. Yeah, I think I think uh, uh, Inglorious Bastards is an original score too. There's. <sighs> Cause I don't know. If there's a lot of music in that movie. I can't really remember though. There's, um, yeah. 
I don't know. I think that man. one's got a pretty good, like a pretty much a, like a score to it too. But uh, but yeah, I my I mean I don't know. I'm just I'm a huge Tarantino fan, and I'm excited to see him kind of go back into like what appears to be somewhat of a uh, horror realm. Yeah. Because one of my favorite movies, like in my top five favorite movies of all time, if I had to like make a list, uh, from Dust Till Dawn is in that list. Oh, I yeah, absolutely dude. love that movie, and that's written by him. Mm-hmm. And you know, starring him, right? Uh, but directed by Robert Rodriguez, and I love yeah. Robert Rodriguez. Dude, you know what? I watched. I had I've I had heard a million. I've heard so much about that movie, and one day I was like, "All right, I'm gonna watch this movie." And but no one actually, no one told me about the big fucking twist. The vampires. No, I did not know. <laughs> That's funny. And I was watching this, and I'm like, "This is fucking so good so far. Like, it was a really good yeah. movie." And then that shit, it was like, "What the fuck, dude?" <laughs> I, it's because it's like the first half is directed by Tarantino and the second half is directed by Robert Rodriguez. Dude, the like, first half feels. was so fucking good, man. And and then I don't know. I guess it was it was still cool. It was different. It, like fuck just, it, they yeah. got to do what they want to do. Exactly. So fucking who cares? Like, right. I I think I love it, and I actually like the <laughs> the TV series. Uh, the from Dustin on TV series. God, like my big fucking leg. And <laughs> I haven't seen season Jeez. two yet, but I, I like the first season. But uh. But yeah, I yeah, huge huge Tarantino fan. Dude, I could talk all day about Tarantino. Right. Um So what about you? What have you been doing on the side besides not doing YouTube? Too much stuff, man. Too much stuff. I uh Dan Murphy and I uh you know Dan from this show. But yeah. uh Dan and I started a production company called Garage House Studios. I've seen that. And we just did a commercial for a local restaurant, and we've gotten some calls for some other commercials. So that stuff's going pretty well so far. Uh, a lot of intrigue, at least, going on. Uh, and we're just trying to, you know, make money with uh, all the talent and, like, skills that we've Yeah, we've, fuck we've it. Got. Why not, like, dude? Uh, you know, like what I was saying earlier, if, you know, if this hobby can pay for itself, that would be awesome. Uh, but we're hoping to eventually, I mean... We, I mean, it's all in the works here. Just in the next couple of months, we we plan on having our own store. Uh, like it's gonna be a comic book skateboard shop, uh, with video production and just like kind of like an all around geek store, and that's gonna be right here in Winnemac. And I'm really excited about that. And that's kind of I think that's the first time I've actually done like an official announcement on that. I've told a lot of people. There's a lot of people in this town that know that that's happening. That yeah. I get questioned about it all the time. But um, we're doing that. Uh, we've got movies in the works. We're shooting uh, House of Horrors 2.5 here soon. Uh, oh, which shit, is, dude. Uh, that sounds that Dan's sounds legit. third House of Horrors movie. <laughs> uh, we're shooting that soon. We're doing... Uh, what are we doing? We're doing Dolly Deadly. Uh, Dolly Deadly 2. Uh, Kill Dolly Kill, I think is the official title. Uh, where, you know, we're, I'm the cinematographer on that. And so we've been uh, really working on that here lately, too. Uh, so lots of lots of big projects on the horizon. We also have a hopefully it's we're we're in the process of writing like a uh, a, a movie that we might end up filming this fall maybe. Uh, so like it's just like three movies coming up here in like next. Jeez, within, dude, within you made me want to so. kill myself. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, well, all this stuff is just you know it's just it's fun stuff. That's a lot a lot of work and uh, and you know you're more than well you know you, you only live. Like 20 I know, miles man. away. Like, I know, but like I said, I'm stuff, like, man. I'm fucking. I've just been feeling sorry for myself, dude. No excuses. <laughs> no excuses. Like poor me, dude. I fucking keep having kids, and I, I'm just. Uh, I just. I'm, they I'm make a, these things <clears> called condoms. I'm you know? a dad, dude. I'm just a dad. You know, I'm a working. I'm a factory working fucking dad, and it's cool. Like I can embrace that, but then again, like sometimes, man, it, it gets me down. But that's that's i, mean, I that's... don't know dude sometimes i i love it but then what it is dude is i don't get time i don't ever get time to to work on what i want to work because i constantly have to go to work and that and anyone who knows me knows that's my number one like obstacle to try to overcome to to do something i don't know I yeah oh man I, 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 I think I've, I've had this talk with you once before. Like we were, I tried to do a video with you, uh, when it comes down to motivation versus discipline Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, when you work 16 hour shifts, like you just did, 
uh, you know, how motivated do you feel to actually like make a video? Even if, even if you know, even if you had a video lined up that you had <laughs> zero to get done, is like, the answer to no that. No motivation, none. And uh, that's that's my biggest issue that I have is um, like motivation versus discipline. So it's like it's like we get up, we go to work every day uh, because we're disciplined to, not because we're motivated to. You're not motivated yeah. to drive to work, but you do it because you're disciplined to. Right. So it's like I feel like for content sake, like for getting content out for just the sake of content to to keep your channel going and growing, uh, you have to have the discipline to like make, just make the time. And, uh, that is, I mean, it's my, my, like, I have more time than you do to work on this stuff. Uh, because I work a nine to five job and I have time in the evening to, and I don't have kids. Uh, you know, so I have, I have a lot more free time to work on this stuff, but I'm like, Motive. Like, I saw Dunkirk and haven't done a review for Dude, it Dude, I saw it too. It was so good. <laughs> I didn't like it that much. <laughs> you didn't like it that much? I, I enjoyed the movie for what it was. The story kind of lacked. There isn't one. It's right. A, it's a it's, movie about an event. Like, it's an event that's movie. That's true. And uh, I just, it's beautiful. It kind of had like a... Um, Saving Private Ryan, kind of. No way. Saving Private Ryan was fucking way better, dude. No, I mean, Saving Private Ryan is one of the best movies ever made in my opinion. Right. No, like, but a lot. I, I feel like that's what it just keeps getting compared to as being like really that kind of war movie. Like, no, not at all. No, it's not like so? that at all. I haven't seen Saving Private Ryan in a long time. I need to, that's a movie that I need to. No re-watch. way, dude. Saving Private Ryan has so much more to it. Right. <laughs> I think Saving Private Ryan, Private Mercury, had like a more of a pretty in depth story to it. Like, yeah. This, yeah, there's an actual story. Yeah, there's dude. an actual like, story. This fall, like, yeah, Dunkirk follows three different groups of characters. In, yeah, you got the air, the water, and the land. Right, and uh, and it's edited together with like a nonlinear timeline that I think confused a lot of people. But ish. yeah, it confused the fuck out of me. I knew it was I, a nonlinear timeline going in, so I. Uh, whenever so I didn't know until when those kids are trying to swim to the boat, and then that dude who was on the. Spoilers. Oh, yeah, shit. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. Go see Dunkirk and, and you form your own opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, it was... It had no character arcs. Like, there's no there's no characters. Like, you, could, could you tell me anybody's name? Like, like no. No characters' names. Like, right. uh, no real growth of anybody. It was just like, here's some people. They're trying to survive or do their job or whatever. And it, it was... I thought the opening scene was pretty badass. Yeah, the opening scene was cool. It's a well put together, beautiful movie. It was Christopher Nolan. It you know, it's you knew that that going in that it was going to be at least a gorgeous film, and it very much is. But for me, when I go to see a movie, I just I think I I think it lacked in just storytelling, and I right. I always go to a movie that for for preferably like a good story. They should show that movie should just be shelved and be specifically for like film students to learn like That's incredible cinematography <laughs> really yeah a lot of people said that I, yeah yeah but um, i saw that haven't done a review on it because it's the motivation thing it's like i saw it i had plenty of time to do a review for it i just never got around to doing it i was thinking about doing it this weekend just because i don't have a movie to see this weekend because this weekend's atomic blonde and i already i saw that like three or four weeks ago yeah put that put that review out so man so you even have to go watch bad movies too huh yeah. You have to like put yourself through that. Well, kind of. I kind of, if I know the movie's going to be real garbage, yeah. I don't go see it. Like yeah. the Emoji movie came out this weekend. I could have went and saw it. Dude, you should. That's going to be, just because of the hype around it, because it's everyone shitting on it, you right. should do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just for is, like YouTube sake. My, my biggest, my biggest thing is when, when it comes to reviews though, it's like you have to be ahead <clears> of the curve <throat> to bring in the views because mm-hmm. all, when if all the big reviewers are up there, people have already watched reviews. They're not like, they usually don't come to your review. Uh, so that's why I've been doing these advanced screenings. Like I got YouTube algorithm. Dude. I got my atomic blonde review up before any of the big YouTubers did. That's another thing with me, dude. Uh, my YouTube has been fucking stagnant ever since I started the fucking thing. And I went into YouTube without really knowing much about it, but I figured I had this idea that I would post it and then random motherfuckers would just be watching my videos all the time. And that's not the fucking case, dude. Yeah. It's like whoever I show it to on Facebook, Facebook is that's the only fucking views it'll get. Right. That my, my Facebook, the Facebook Red Entertainment page has 400 likes. So it's like that audience is growing bigger. So like yeah. more of those people are kind of watching my videos, but they're not subscribing to the actual channel. I think, man, Facebook, I think they're about to like, I mean, I've been seeing ads on every facebook video now that i fucking yeah watch. They're, yeah fa- facebook has been trying to get into the video space for a long time and they've just taken like a big uh big update here recently that and that's another thing dude it. it's another reason i haven't been um 
Are we still on? Yeah, we're rounding out the hour here. We're at 55 minutes, so I don't know if we want to start maybe I don't know. wrapping it up. or it's, uh, um, I don't care. <laughs> we've come full circle now on, the, on back on YouTube again, so I feel like maybe it's uh, it's poetic to end here. Oh, shit. <laughs> all right, well, let me say what I got to say. All right, no, quick. it's cool. It's cool. I think it's all just going to shit, dude. I yeah. think entertainment, man, is it's everything's just so fucking fast paced. Like if, if, if video, if Facebook video becomes like the new platform, it's just swipe and fucking swipe and scroll and everything's just super fast and no one gives a fuck anymore. And that's one of the reasons I don't really want to put a whole lot of fucking time in it. If no one's watching my shit, man, like, it's, uh, but Facebook, Facebook is a different, is a different crowd. You're not the people who the like diehard, youtubers like i mean not youtubers and creators but like people who actually just watch youtube right uh don't they're not they're not the people that watch facebook i feel like the facebook right video, oh, i understand but uh, is it gonna go to that i think that they're trying to go to there but i think that facebook has um basically their big crowd now is all the viners like all the people that made vine videos yeah. are now on facebook because they're right. that quick style of just scroll through but dude i'm wondering but, is is like creation is the creative side of everything just getting destroyed? I is, think that you are being very negative. <laughs> I don't know, though. I think I, think I, I see, see where you're coming like, from. No, but. dude. Okay, I watch my daughter, right? My daughter, she'll be five here in a couple days. And she, of course, she's young. So she's going to, I don't know, she gets on YouTube, dude, and she, watch these, she watches these god-awful YouTube <laughs> yeah. videos that just have millions of views. It's just some shitty mom following her kids around with a fucking iPhone and like screaming at them and the kids are screaming and it's just there's no fucking structure to it whatsoever but it's got 50 million views from kids dead fucking kids <laughs> just scrolling dude yeah and just and loving watching and then they'll wait for that video to end and then they'll click the link for the next one and they'll sit there all fucking year if you let them dude watching this shit yeah it's crazy uh, man Ch charlie's kids but do the same is, stuff okay but my daughter she's gonna be 10 years old one day she's gonna be fucking 18 years old someday right. is that like is that shaping her mind to just to just like garbage you know what i mean is there gonna be like a creative there i'm sure there's always going to be there's always going to be right. artists but are the artists going to be as genuine as they are now you know uh, what i mean i don't know i think i think so i think that they'll always be genuine artists making content st strictly because because they their love for making content right and uh i i don't know i think that i think that all that garbage has always been there and uh not, now you now really, that you're though, actually dude, in not the space, really what about when we were kids what about when we were kids and we watched cartoons yeah they're fucking cartoons and they're loud and crazy but they're a lot of work when they do and people took pride in making these fucking right. cartoons but they were also really garbage cartoons at the time too I mean, there was a lot of stuff that was like crappy that you didn't watch. I guess. <laughs> I, I guess so. Yeah, you you have with YouTube. You like you don't have with TV. With YouTube, you have the choice to watch what you want to watch. But when right. I'm a kid, but when, but when you were a kid though, when you're a kid though, you're watching network network cartoons and that had money and a studio and a budget and like you know you're watching fox's morning cartoon lineup and stuff like that yeah with youtube it's these are all you know it's independent creators with absolutely no budget shooting things on their phone and there's a there's a difference between the mom who's just following her kids around versus like the dude who has just made like this crazy cinematic vlog that you're trying to figure out how he managed to shoot it all on a phone yeah and you're like my phone doesn't look that good <laughs> yeah but, uh, uh, there's there's a, there's a difference and they draw different audiences. I think that the kids that are watching that kind of stuff, I think that uh, it, either it's a phase that they'll grow out of, or maybe they... It's like it's the same thing with music, though. Idiocracy, man. Right, That's right. where we're headed. <laughs> but it's the same thing with music. Like People don't listen to albums anymore. They don't listen to... like. I don't know. It's coming back to you. It's like super retro. Right, no, no. I mean, people, I mean vinyls are back, out. but I'm saying like like the, the mass... like populist they they listen to songs they don't listen to albums like true have you heard this guy this this new song by whatever or even if they know the artist at all like have you heard this one song like i don't i don't know people that really go and buy music anymore they buy singles tracks if they buy anything right i uh, like i i buy Fucking vinyls iTunes, because man. it comes with a digital <clears throat> download 
and I listen to all my music off my phone in the car. And if I'm at home, I listen to records. I'm but, a CD guy, dude. I just I love CDs, man. Yeah, I I stopped I stopped CDs just because I I like the artwork. I like having the actual right. That's why I, that's thing. why I like that's why I like vinyl. I'm an old man, dude. Great. My daughter probably doesn't even know what a fucking CD is. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Seriously, it's crazy. That's all right. I worked with a girl at when I, I used to manage a gas station for like like years, and uh, one of the girls in there, a high school girl. Uh, she had like a pair of those Beats headphones, like Beats yeah. by Dre, and I was like, "Do you even know who Dr. Dre is?" And she was like, "Who?" <laughs> I was like, "The headphones, like Beats by Dre," and she's like, "Yeah." I was like, "But do you know who he is?" And she's like, "No." <laughs> and I was just like, "Yep, I'm old. All right." <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> That's cool, man. You just asked her like that. I was just curious. I was like, "Do you know, or do you just know the brand? Like, do you know the guy?" Like, dude, I. I did that. Okay, I did something similar like that to uh, my cousin, and I felt bad afterwards because I was like, if someone had done that to me, I would have fucking been like shitty. But my cousin, um, he's younger. He's like uh, eighteen, nineteen now. But he got um, he got a Jerry Bear, you know, um, Grateful Dead bear. Oh, yeah. on his arm, and I was like, name one song from Grateful Dead, and he couldn't, dude. He couldn't. I was like, so you're gonna? But I get it. It's you know. He's a stoner. Whatever. It's <laughs> it's cool. But um, if someone would have called me out like that, I would have been like, "Fuck you, dude. You're a dick." So I probably shouldn't have done that. I felt bad afterwards, but yeah, I was just I was testing out the waters. Yeah, I saw uh, like a little Facebook video the other day of a girl wearing a Nirvana shirt, and oh, her parents were listening to Nirvana, and they're like, "Hey, who's uh, uh who sings this song?" And she's like, "I don't know." Dude, <laughs> she's wearing that's so shirt. funny dude, you can't even fucking listen to certain bands without even with people just being just it sucks that's what i hate about like bands like nirvana or any big band like that or not even big band nirvana's like this it's got this very i'm not i wouldn't say pretentious but it's like it's like people who are nirvana fans if, if someone says that People just get criticized, dude. You right. can't wear a fucking Nirvana shirt. No, it's like, well, people, people our age are fine. Like, if we, we, we wear a Nirvana shirt, we're fine. Yeah. It's, it's the younger generation that gets the heat. Uh, I don't know, though. But, I mean, I got, like, my boss is a huge Nirvana fan. We just listen to Nirvana. We, like, listen to Nirvana every day at work. Nirvana's right. playing. And, I, and, you know, and I, I actually never really was a huge Nirvana fan. Like, I liked Nirvana, but I wasn't, like, a huge Nirvana fan. But now I've become more of a big Nirvana fan because it's dude, playing all, oh, all the time. I've been, I've been a Nirvana fan I've been a Nirvana fan since I was like 14 years old. And this was like right around the time I actually started listening to music. That Yeah, that was your music? That was my music. And I remember one of the first songs, dude, that I ever was like, fuck. Like, this is what music is. Was, and it's ironically not even his song, but it was uh, from the Unplugged album, uh, Man Who Sold the World, originally by David Bowie. Uh-huh. Dude, their version is just, I mean, everyone knows that song. It's, it's fucking amazing. But... Yeah. Um, but yeah, even then though, I remember not wanting to tell people like I'm a Nirvana fan because I was in like a fear of people being. It's just one of those bands, you know what I, think I mean? That, it's, yeah, I think that that <clears throat> that band uh, and even like um, uh, NWA is like one of those bands now too, dude. Which is that's weird. so funny. I got a story <laughs> real quick. I just downloaded uh, Straight Outta Compton. So I did I did recently, too. <laughs> um, the other day, because I was like, dude, I want to listen to some fucking 90s gangster rap, dude. Right. And I swear to God, I had a moment that was straight out of... Um, Compton? No. <laughs> no, that was straight out of Office Space. Remember yeah. the beginning when he's rolling, he's like cruising down the fucking highway in a traffic jam, and he's like blaring some gangster rap, and then the, the black dude walks up. And he like slowly turns it down and rolls his window up. Dude, I had that moment the other day because I went to see Dunkirk and I just downloaded um, the album on my phone and I was blaring it, dude. And I was driving through Cherville, dude. And it's like yeah. all black people. And uh, and I swear to God, I got to pull up to the stoplight and I'm blaring it, dude. And this like this big ass SUV pulls up with a bunch of dudes in it, a bunch of homies, man, rolling. And I fucking roll my window up <laughs> and I turn the music down. And I swear to God, straight out of. Uh, straight out of office space oh that's but, great yeah. that's pretty great but all right man are we gonna are we gonna wrap this up I, yeah. I love this let me explain real quick <laughs> why i wanted to do this i've had this recent obsession yeah that should be noted this was all your idea to do i've this had podcast. this recent obsession with podcasts and and i just i love it dude i love the medium i feel like it's 
obviously it's been a thing for a long time. I just never yeah, really, just I just it. never really tapped into it. But um, it all started with a couple dudes from Judson, um, Matt Wright and Gary Baxter. They started a podcast. Um, it's like a gaming and uh, and just random shit mm. um, podcast. They talk, about, but they it's it's a good gaming podcast. But they talk about everything, anything and everything. And um, and I don't even I don't even play video games. I don't. I probably don't like a lot of the shit that they do, but I like a lot of music they like, and I just I know them kind of, you know, right. from like mutual friends or whatever. Um, <clears throat> Basically, you heard, hey, local guys are doing something I creative. See, they that's shared kind it. Of in they my... shared it on Facebook. I was right. like, I'll give it a listen. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. I just like listening to them talk about shit right. that they are passionate about. And I think it's something we're like growing. I think it's something we're growing away from. Is like is like talking. It's like we're. As a society, dude, we don't fucking have conversations anymore. Right. It's like everything's through text or, or messenger or or whatever. Yeah. Like you you talk to the people at work. And like I'm super close to people at work because I have conversations like this with right. them, you know. But I feel like that's uh it's not as um frequent as Right. It used to be. You so don't call I, people anymore. Like you used to call people. And there's just something. And catch up. There, but now just, you just read like, about it on Facebook. Yeah. You don't actually, there's like, something about listening to some, like two people or three people or whatever, having a genuine conversation. Yeah. About shit they want to fucking talk about, dude. And it's like, it just rubs off on you. And I'm like, I could do that. Like we could sit and talk about some shit. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I listen to like some <clears> podcasts. <throat> when I, when I, when, the first podcast I think I ever listened to was Doug Loves Movies. Which is probably what's still one of my favorite podcasts, but I don't, I haven't really listened to it much this year. Uh, but it's uh, Doug Benson. You know, yeah, Benson. yeah, fucking super high me, yeah. comedian and shit. Yeah, yeah. Doug, it's Doug Benson's movie podcast. It's called Doug Loves Movies, and it's he just has three other comedians, and it's a game show, is what it is. It's yeah, just, it's a trivia game show, and it's okay. really funny. Uh, that was the first. That was the podcast that kind of got me into podcasts, uh, and then I found stuff that was a little bit more. Um, uh, what do I want to say? Like teaching stuff, like just like learning things and uh, yeah, just just more like intelligent stuff that was like, oh, I'm gonna listen to this to actually like maybe gain something from it, yeah, not dude. just to laugh. Like like on the ride to work, like why not learn some shit? You know, right. I don't that's know. why I got into like cracked podcasts a lot, uh, which I really enjoyed those, and I still listen to those uh, pretty regularly. But uh, but yeah, and then I got it also got me into audiobooks, which is okay, uh, yeah, super great because uh, I, I worked at a job where I traveled across the country and we. Uh, clean Mormon churches, which is a random job, but uh, I had headphones all the time, so I got into audiobooks. And yeah, it's, there's something about uh, just the ability to kind of learn on the go that I, I really appreciated from it, but yeah, also sure. just creators that are just having a genuine conversation, stuff yeah. like that. Like my friend uh, Troy Ritabu had a podcast uh, last year called Zero Lives, it was a video game podcast. Uh, which you needs to needs to bring back if you are listening to this and have made it an hour and eight minutes into this podcast. <laughs> Nobody has. <laughs> right. I don't know, dude. When I listen to podcasts, I fucking love that. When I see they're three hours long, I'm like, fuck yes, dude. Now this is like, I can listen to this to and from work. I can listen to it at work. I can listen to all this and I get stoked. I love long ass podcasts, right. dude. I'm, hour, hour long is usually like where I stand on it. Like I love podcasts that are about an hour long. Yeah. I, just because that's usually what I have time for. Because if I, well, so I guess I'm not. I, I sometimes I if like I, being. A, I pause it though, dude. I right. pause sometimes it. Sometimes if I get halfway through yeah. one, I won't come back to it though. It's, really? It's sometimes it's my if problem. they're like talking about something I'm like really getting into, and I have to right. pause it, dude, I'll definitely go back to it. Yeah. But then again, when I say I've recently been into podcasts i mean like really recently so maybe i'm just like down that rabbit hole right now and eventually i'll be like fuck podcasts you know but for right now i love it and i want to do I mean, it I, I want to start doing this for sure once a week dude yeah i i think that we could we could definitely do this once a week and uh definitely like make this a regular a regular show i uh, usually weekends are pretty good so it's cool we do it. and also i don't know if i'm gonna do this like i really want to but i've been wanting to my the reason this whole thing started I, I was talking to tony i wanted to start a podcast of me just driving in my car just me on my way to work and he's like well, why don't you like have me i'll like look shit up on the computer for you and you i could like call in and we could do it like over the phone and then we're, i was like well why don't we just fucking you got all the equipment why don't we just get together and do this but i still like the idea of doing it doing like a, a 50 minute on the or maybe like an hour long i could leave a little early from work you know right 
And an hour long podcast on the way to work, dude. Just I could do that every single day. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah, I think that's a good idea. I really do. And I think that even if it was just you talking in your car, I think is great. But if you have a uh, if you have somebody on the phone, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a funny idea too because mid conversation, I just want you to yell at traffic and stuff. And I think yeah, it'd be great. oh dude, I'm a fucking <laughs> bad road rager, man. Bad. I fucking hate, despise people when I'm in my car. I, just, I hate I, everyone. I just know that's gonna happen when. Uh, <clears throat> You're, you're driving and you're in the midst of like some deep conversation because you're like honking, like get the fuck out of the way. I, the amount of people that don't know that you're not supposed to drive slow in the left lane, it baffles me. <laughs> I saw you posted something like that on Facebook. Recently. Yeah, dude. And that wasn't even from me. That was like an actual, and, right, and like it was an, like people really don't know that you're supposed to fucking go yeah. to the right if you're going to drive slow. But people, you got people just neck and neck, dude, both yeah. lanes down the highway, and they don't fucking give a shit. They don't think they're doing anything wrong. And meanwhile, I'm behind them fucking about ready to kill someone. <laughs> but uh, that's a topic for another time, folks. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up now. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if you made it this far through the podcast, thanks. We really appreciate it. Um, and we'll probably do this again next week. We're going to try and make this a regular thing. So uh, let us know what topics you liked from the conversation we had. And what I don't you think want to I've looked us. at this camera one time. <laughs> Let us know what you, uh, you know, if you, there's any topics you want us to tackle. I mean, I'm down to, to uh, try, you know, down to talk about whatever. Really, that's kind of what this podcast is. There's really no theme. It's Hell just, yeah, uh, dude, that's what I love. Just I two love... guys bullshitting, and uh, that's kind of what my life revolves around here, especially lately. So two guys on camera. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week, hopefully right here on the Rad Podcast. I'm Tony Walters. I'm Wes Carter. Uh, can you can people find you somewhere? If you want, yeah, I, I guess we, we talked about it at the beginning. <laughs> if of the show. you want, you can go on my fucking shitty YouTube channel. I do <laughs> vlogs sometimes. I get really motivated and do one a day for like a week at a time, and then I won't post anything for two months. They're so really good, though. If you're go, into get that, on there and watch this backlog. If you're stuff. into that sort of thing, maybe by the time you get through the backlog, I'll have a new one. Go subscribe. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, subscribe right here at Rad Entertainment, and you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Rad Entertain, and you can follow myself at Tony Walters underscore. And then just, just look me up. I don't know. You might find me, you might not. I might plug myself better later on, but uh, <laughs> yeah. as for right now, I'm in a weird spot. So we'll just leave it at that. All right. All right. We'll see you guys next week on the Rad Podcast. See you next week.